whew, that took a little while. That took a little while. Um, I was made aware, first of all, of the mess that I have in the background here. Good grief, am I underprepared. Don't mind me, just acquiring um, travel sizes of my favorite hair products because, you know, when you travel, you need to have your favorite hair products with you, you know? You know what I'm saying? Um, but also, I want to take a second and give people an opportunity to get on here because I've been told that it takes a couple seconds for the live stream to catch up with y'all. Um, so like if I go immediately hit go live and then start talking, you guys lose somewhere between five and 15 seconds of me rambling on. So why have the stellar greeting when there's nobody around to listen to it? So with that being said, hopefully now everybody is all set and ready to go. Hello. Good evening. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I was going to say welcome back to Wellness Wednesday, but I don't even know what we call this anymore. Free coaching hour, hang out with me, desserts with the diva, Wellness Wednesday, whatever, whatever we're here for. I am glad that you are here to hang out with me this evening. Let's see who is here. We have Andy and Lissa, Michelle, Julie, Rosie, Lauren. Hello, my friends. It is so, so good to see you. There were times we could get into the countdown with closer to 30 seconds left. Yeah, that's and that's kind of what I wondered. And I also don't know exactly what the delay is. Because, you know, when I was using StreamYard, the delay was so great that if I asked you a question and wanted an immediate answer, I literally would have to stall for like 20 to 30 seconds to allow for you guys to get the question and then type the answer to me. So I don't know. Let's, let's test. Let's test this. Okay. Are you ready? In the chat, please tell me a color. And then tell me. Periwinkle. Okay. That was about 10 seconds. That was about 10 seconds from when I said it, maybe nine or eight from when I said it to when I got my first answer. But then y'all came in clutch. Y'all came in clutch. Okay. So it is about 10 seconds for me, even on YouTube, to be able to ask you something and then have it process. You hear it, type and hit enter. That is very good to know. But thank y'all for answering the question. Good evening. I am so glad that you are here with me. Just got the notification about a minute ago. Awesome. Lovely. Love that for me. I don't, you know, and here's the thing. What's bonkers to me is like, I schedule this in advance. And like, so it should be like in your subscription feeds and all of this. And then when I go live randomly, it's like, bam, everyone sees it immediately. I don't know, what is that about? I don't even know, but it doesn't matter. I digress. My friends, I am so glad that you are here to hang out with me for a little bit. We've got a little something to chit chat about today, but as per usual, I also want to open it up for random Q&A type situation, which I have to remember how to do. Engage with my audience. Start a Q&A. Ask me anything. Can't type today. You know, you think by now I'd figure out that I can do that at the beginning. So there's a little Q&A thing if we would like to um, ask any questions, live chat, got to go back and forth. Um, but we got some interesting things to talk about today. But first, I would love to hear from you. It is time, my friends, to share your highs and lows. This, for anybody that is new here Andy is coming in clutch with the questions already. Way to go, Andy. Way to be on top of it this evening, my friend. Um, let's share some highs and lows. For those that are new to the weekly chat, highs and lows is the community's opportunity to share what they've been going through. Your high is, of course, your highlight of the week, and there is no celebration too small. Your high could be you had a really great cup of coffee on Saturday morning. It doesn't matter. I love to celebrate all of your highs. And then on the flip side, if you want to share your low, the struggle, the thing that's kind of meh, about your week. I would love to hear about that as well. And the community would love to hear about it because we like to support and love on one another. And then if you want to share your wellness win, something that you want to celebrate as it pertains to your wellness journey, we would love to hear about that. And if you have something you are working on, what is your working on it? The thing in your typically wellness journey, but life is also acceptable that you're 
working on improving on a little bit. I would love to hear about those as well. Um, it was also quick to answer the, the, yeah, the, the question was quick to answer. I just wanted to see what the, what the delay was between a really simple answer and me asking the question. Um, so uh, I will get to Andy's question about my favorite color, although most of you probably already know. Um, but that being said, what are my highs this week? Um, we had, you know, it was fabulous. I had a girl's gab session yesterday. Um, I actually had a lot, but oh, my wellness win slash one of the highs is actually one of the topics of tonight's video. So we're going to put my wellness win. We're going to put a pin in that for the time being. But my high was, let's call it just the one high that we had girls gab on Monday afternoon. What is girls gab? I would love to tell you. Sorry, that was bothering me. Um, I would love to tell you. Girls Gab is what we, the women of small group, call when we get together without our husbands. And so we just start, it's called Girls Gab when we get together in my calendar, in all of our calendars, it's called Girls Gab. We reference it as such, and we have a text thread and an Instagram <laughs> DM thread all titled Girls Gab because when we get together, we gab and gab and gab. And we had a four hour middle of the Monday afternoon gab session this week, which was fabulous. We are all coming from different walks of life. One person who normally works a nine to five job, she was off this week. So she hosted. And there are a couple of people that work that have flexible jobs like me. I don't tend to work on Mondays unless I have to. So I was completely free. And um, the, the leader of small group is retired. So we all all of the girls, we completed the puzzle. We all got together at one of our houses and had a blast. There were two babies there and boy, oh boy, was that fun. Four hours, <laughs> four hours. What was really funny is the husband of one of the girls was coming over to our house after work to help my husband move some furniture. And I only beat him home by a couple of minutes. Um, it was a great time. It was a great time. So that is going to be considered my high for the week with my pin in the other high that we'll talk about in a little bit. My low is that my ankle is still bothering me. And it's to the point of like, do I go get this checked? Or is it just is it just part of my life right now? Because I'm having this really weird ankle pain that like comes and goes intermittently. Some days it's bad. Some days it's not. Some days if I stretch, it gets better. Some days it doesn't. Lately, there's also been like a little burning sensation right in the, um, okay, so let's pretend that this is my foot, right? Right here in my ankle, right front and freaking center. There's a little burning sensation that causes a whole lot of pain, which makes me think it's a nerve thing. It's a CMT thing and I have to deal with it. So that's my low. My wellness win is the thing we have the pin in and my working on it is stretching stretching. Y'all, you would you would think, what is it about me? I know what it is about me. I'm an obliger and I don't have anybody keeping me accountable. I should probably make my husband keep me accountable. <gasps> I just had that thought. Oh, I don't know if I want to do it because he'll do it. He'll keep me accountable if I ask him to and say, hey, make sure I stretch before I go to bed every night. I don't stretch. I don't stretch. And I need to, especially since my ankle's been hurting. And here's the thing. When I stretch, like the deep stretch, I don't mean just like, oh, I'm sitting on the floor with my with my hamstring touch. When I do the hamstring stretch, that is like, I don't know how to illustrate it appropriately for you. Visualize with me, if you will, a door frame. Okay? A door frame. So you can stick your you can stick your um leg out the door. And then you take your other leg. So you lay with your booty up against the door frame. One leg goes out the door, the other leg goes on the door frame. So your your legs are in an L, right? Okay. And so then you're you're getting the hamstring, calf, the entire back of your leg stretch for the leg that is on the door frame. Then, because girlfriend can't flex her feet on her own, I take a stretchy band and I put it around my foot and I pull. So my foot ends up in a flexed position, which it cannot do naturally. That sucker hurts. But it is one of those hurts so good type situations. You know what I'm saying? And so the other day, after a hard ankle day, I 
laid on the floor and I did this deep stretch for about a minute and a half. And wouldn't you know it, when I got up and started walking again, the pain went away. So why am I not doing this three times a day? I have no idea. I have no idea. So that is what I'm working on is the deep stretch. I will say, and I'm seeing all your stuff come in. I'm going to get to the comments in a section. I'm just giving everybody a chance to type out their highs, lows, wins, and working on it. Um, the what I, I purchased something today that I don't know why it didn't dawn on me weeks ago, or at least a couple weeks ago, to do this. And that was, I bought myself a new TENS unit. TENS unit, I don't actually know what the TENS unit stands for, but it is one of those things like you slap the electrodes on your body. Have you seen, have you seen those, um, videos where they put a machine on men to simulate period pain for them? And they put it on like men and women and they see who tolerates it more. I'm 90% sure what they're using is a TENS unit. So it sends electrical pulses to that vibrate to your muscles. And I had one ages and ages and ages ago. I have vivid memories of my mom slapping them on the back of my arm and turning it on to try and stimulate the tricep muscles of which I have no function. And I remember hating it. And then I took that one from my parents' house in my 20s. And every once in a while I used it, but I never thought to use it. Why do normal people use it? Why do non-CMT, non-people who need to stimulate the muscles for strength, why do they use it? A lot of people use it for pain management. And I was like, what if I got myself, because I've been trying the stretches, I've been massaging, I've been cupping, like those little silicone suction cups, like suck in your skin and make a ball and it gets really, really red and it increases circulation. I've been doing that almost daily and it helps temporarily. So I've been sitting there going, what what am I missing? What form of treatment am I not doing that I could be doing? And the TENS unit came to mind this morning and praise the good Lord for Amazon Prime. It was here by three o'clock this afternoon. And I sat and I did a 20 minute session on my TENS unit. I have to wait and see how it feels after, I, um, after I've been sitting for an hour, but it definitely helped. And here's the kicker. Here's Here's the kicker. How do you know? Tell me you have a peripheral nerve disorder without telling me you have a peripheral nerve disorder. I put the electrodes, one right on that center spot on my ankle. I put one underneath my foot where my plantar fasciitis knot right on my arch keeps uh, flaring up. So I had one here. I had one here. And then I put it on, this is my calf. In, if, in case you forgot, I'm simulating my leg right here. I put one here on this side of my calf and on the other side of my calf to stimulate kind of all of the areas that kind of pull and tug and everything on my ankle. Tell me you have CMT without telling me you have CMT. I turned on the ones on my feet, couldn't feel them. Turned up the intensity all the way to 10. And I spent 20 minutes with both, both all four electrodes all the way at the top power, all the way at the top power. Eventually, what was really interesting is I didn't really feel it on my feet at first, but as the 20 minute therapy progressed, I started to feel, it started to feel more intense to me. So it's almost like the electrodes were, um, waking up my nerves because it was more intense by the end than at the beginning, which I thought was really interesting. And there was less sensation in my foot than there were in my calves. I'm very interested to like slap it on my arm or on my abdomen or my back to see how level 10 feels on not a peripheral nerve on my body. Very, very interesting. Jordan, hey! And I saw Donna and Kathy came in here too. Love it, love it, love it. Love to see all of you. Um, So that's what I'm, I'm working on. I'm, I'm working on all of the things. But I wanted to share that little tidbit because I just got it. I literally, I haven't eaten dinner yet because I was, we're busy cleaning because my mother-in-law gets into town tonight. And um, so I was cleaning and everything. And I'm like, I just got to sit down and treat my ankles. So I prioritized that over eating dinner this evening. It's fine. No problem. Uh, da, 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 da. Andy says his highs, I found cholesterol free margarine. Low, I'll tell you in a private message. Fair enough. Liz's high is that I've been, I've sold all but three of my former water bottle collection, lids, bottles and all. But I also, but also my real potential high isn't something I'm sharing here yet. Um, Cub Scouts Ventures, rice, what? 
Low, 15 hours of work these next two weeks, not enough, and I'm scheduled to work next Saturday. Haven't worked Saturday since 2018, and then I was done by 8 a.m. Um, and then Kathy came in and Donna came in. Less is win. I have been doing really well with my eating since the beginning of the month. The last few days, I've been killing it with the fiber and the water, and the scale is cooperating, which is a nice bonus. I'm telling y'all, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you start showing up for your body nutritionally, you, reminder, Liz is not tracking. She's not tracking. There's no calories here. There's no specific macros. It's just, is there protein? Is there fiber? Is there, am I adhering to general guidelines of nutrition? And, and your body will respond. If your body has excess weight to lose, it will respond not going to lie to you. Um, my weight has gone down the last handful of days too. About the last week, my weight's gone down a couple pounds. And I was just like, oh, isn't that interesting? Fantastic. Moving on. Um, oh, right. Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Compression. I, I need to use compression more. You're right. You're absolutely right. Compression is super, super important. Um, thank you, Andy. Yes, I get it now. Um, Working on, still trying to get my life together. And my mom got a gift card to First Watch, so I'm going there for breakfast tomorrow. I love First Watch. I love First Watch. They're green juice. And, like, let's be clear. There's nothing, there's no health miracle about green juice. But we've just been trained that, like, drinking drink green juice makes us feel healthier, right? I actually love their green juice. It tastes so yummy. And it makes me feel fabulous, even though I know it's just a bunch of sugar without fiber in it. I know that. I'm not dumb. My nutritional knowledge is at play here. But... Oh my gosh. And what I love about First Watch is there's actually a lot of really nutritious options. So what I tend to do when I go there is I get my coffee and I get my green juice. Am I a basic bougie woman or what? My coffee, my green juice. I get one of like their egg white omelet things and then I get a cinnamon chip pancake. Just one. Just a cinnamon chip pancake because I cannot go out to breakfast without getting a pancake because I love pancakes. <laughs> I've had tens units for sciatica. Mm-hmm. I use a TENS machine. It burns. It burned me leaving with bad scars. Um, how did the TENS unit burn you? Uh, coffee time. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, to be clear, working Saturday in itself isn't really an issue. It's more of a sudden change to my schedule and having to be available 60 hours a week when I'm only being paid for 15. It's the feeling my life has to be on hold for this job and this stress, et cetera, is taking a lot out of me. So my two cents on it, because I've worked my share of retail jobs. I, I know what it's like to have a schedule that only goes like two weeks out before you know. Um, my sister's husband also works one of those jobs where like we try to make plans a month or two in advance and, he's, she, and she's like, great, but I have to wait for my husband's schedule so we know when we're actually available, you know? Um, there's... There's something to be said for leaning into the season and you just have to solve for the season. So you have to, you have this block of time that you need to be available. But once you know your schedule, you can plug everything else into it, right? So is the problem that you don't have time to work out? You don't, I'm just using these as examples. I don't know what your actual examples or situation is. But like, for example, let's say you have a hobby and you want to start a blog and you can't figure out what time you're supposed to work on your blog. You can't figure out when you're doing your grocery shopping and when you are um, doing your workouts, right? Once you know your schedule, it's on you to be like, okay, these are the 15 hours I'm working this week. When can I plug and play? When can I plug and play? Um, and that's that's what you have to do. And you just have to accept that you can't know more than X number of days in advance right now. And that just is going to have to be okay. Because if you decide it's not okay, you're going to make yourself miserable. Plain and simple. You're going to make yourself miserable. And you're making the choice to make yourself miserable and stressed out. So instead of working in opposition to your current situation, you need to lean into and work with your current situation. Um, your life doesn't have to be on hold. I went to the farm market and the hot food bar and they had plain pasta with three choices of sauces. Yummo. That sounds delicious. Um, there's smoked salmon frittata. I really like nice. Um, rice and raids when I was at St. John's, I don't know what raids is either. But rice is what I do have to remember for sure. All right, my friends, I want to chit chat with you about the topic of tonight's live stream.
And I titled it something about like taking the actual first step in body neutrality journey. And I want to share it with you because my wellness, it's my wellness win for the week. And it is the, oh, we're talking about first watch. That's right. Smoked salmon frittata. I have, have I never had those? Have I never had a smoked salmon dish at first watch? <gasps> I feel like that's a sin. I love smoked salmon dishes. Oh my God. Well, I heard, rumor has it that um, my hometown is getting a first watch. So I'm going to have to go there when I visit Illinois. I don't have to go quite as far to, uh, what's it called? Florida. I don't have to go to Florida to get first watch. I can go to Illinois and get first watch now, which is great. But let's chit chat about my my adventure, like my first true adventure into uh, and like big, what felt like a big step, what felt like a validating, affirming step in the direction of body neutrality, body acceptance, nay, body positivity for me, um, which is great. And it's something that I'm actively working on and actively, I'm actively learning to accept my body, even if it's at, not at what I would perceive as goal ideal right? Goal ideal. And let's be clear, my version of goal ideal looks very different than it did back when I was at goal. I am not foolish and naive enough to believe that I will ever get back there ever again. Um, I have new goals, new goals with new, new aspirations, and that's fine. So what was the step that brought me to like truly like a body acceptance, body, almost bo like body love type situation? Saturday, my husband decided we were going shopping. Yes. Shopping with my husband is an adventure. It's an adventure. And I'm talking clothes shopping, clothing. Um, we are we are gathering things for our adventurous travels of the summer. We're updating our summer wardrobe, investing in some great spend a lot of time outside pieces, things of that nature. And he's like, we're going to go. We need to go to Shields. Shields is an adventure. I like Shields a lot. Um, then we left Shields after three hours. I managed to find the shoes I needed and a pair of shorts, two pairs of shorts. I got two pairs of shorts at Shields. It was a good day for me. I spent literally an hour outside of the men's dressing room waiting for him to try on clothes and coming out and getting my opinion. And went, an hour, an hour. So if that tells you what it's like to go shopping with him, okay? God love him. I love him. It's great. I might have texted my mother-in-law and been like, what, it, what was your son like sh clothes shopping as a kid? Because I just had to know. I had to know. Um, and then I made a comment. I was like, you know where we really need to go if we want to buy, like, not Target brand. We wanted, the, we wanted to up-level our branding, right? I was like, we need to go to the freaking outlet malls. We haven't gone to the outlet malls yet. Um, for those that know the Minnesota area, I'm talking about the Egan outlet malls out by Mall of America. We need to go there. My husband's like, well, we're already in the car. Do you want to go now? So we did. We went to the outlet malls. It was an eight hour day of shopping. Eight hours. And I can't complain. I got some pretty things. And I thanked my husband profusely. I'm like, thank you for buying me pretty things. This is one of the pretty things I got. It has a collar. We we compromised. He got the collar that he wants to see me in. I got the V-neck. It was a it was a perfect situation. Here is where things got interesting. We went to White House Black Market. And sent, and White House Black Market is one of my favorite stores to shop in. I love it. There are clothing brands. If you notice, if you go to different stores, especially what do you call them? Like boutique stores, brand stores, not department stores. But like if you go to J. Crew or Banana Republic, you might find that the shape of their clothing overall is much straighter, much boxier, and much more appropriate for certain body types. White House Black Market and their sister store, Soma is made for the curvy girl. And I don't mean the plus size girl. I mean the girl with curves for, for the, the body that's not stick straight, but actually looks like this, which my body is. My body is very curvy, voluptuous hips and booty, nice, like small waist, bigger chest, like the whole, like I'm the, I'm the curvy girl. And so the clothes, if you try on clothes at one of those stores with the wrong body type and you try on clothes with the right body type in the same size, guess what? The one that's the appropriate body type is going to fit you a lot better than the one that's not. 
So White House Black Market has always been, at every size I've ever been, has been one of the stores that I feel amazingly confident in the clothes that I buy there. And they fit me really nice. They fit me nice when I was a small. They fit me nice at my current size, which is a large. Yes. And so as we were going to the different stores, I told my husband, I was like, look, if you're here with me, can you come in with me and show me like, what, what would you like to see me in? What would be enticing to you? If you could pick what I wore, what would you pick? And so he came with me to White House Black Market. And he actually started like going through the racks and picking clothes out for me. And then he sat outside the dressing room and watched me try them all on. I came out and I had to model every piece. And and with a very, um, judgmental is not the right word. What's the word? We're like, he, he analyzed everything he saw. And there were things that he and I both went, mm, that's not flattering. Ooh, this, this is great. Let's buy this. Um, every single piece. Every single piece. I tried on a lot. I was exhausted by the end because we all know if you watch my Disabled Diva channel, what have I said is my number one everyday energy drain. Putting on and taking off clothes. Without fail, putting one, taking, putting on and taking off clothes. Yes, critique, Andy. You're right. That's a good, that's a better word for it. Um, because he was he wasn't judging my body, but he was judging the clothes on my body, right? And some of them were not flattering. And so he's like, mm, no. And it wasn't the fault of my body, it was the fault of the clothes, right? And um, so it was one of those experiences where I had to admit out loud to my husband, who doesn't really pay attention to this stuff, but I had to admit out loud to my husband that, hey, if you're going to pull something from me from this shelf, I am a size large or a size 12. And saying it, as with everything, saying it makes it real, right? If I'm clothes shopping by myself, it's much easier to disregard the size labels. But when I'm clothes shopping and someone else is literally handpicking clothing for me, I have to tell them what size I am. I have to tell them. And he also knows that like in a previous life, girlfriend was a small. And so it was, it was admitting that. But then, but then it gets better. It gets better because I was like, okay, he knows. There's the thing to, and it's not like he didn't know. He already knew. But like this whole interaction was very um, healing for me, truly. It was very heal healing to me. Wait, you're only a 12? Yep, yeah, I'm a size 12. A size 12. Depending on the article of clothing, a size 10. Sometimes I'm a size 14, but that doesn't happen very often. But yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pretty solid 12. Um, and the... Um, once we once we got to the critiquing stage where we were overanalyzing, we were finding things that he actually was like, first of all, he confirmed that I'm a summer, not a winter, because he had me try on this beautiful, all hot pink blouse. He loved the idea of the blouse, the soft material that hugs my curves really nicely. He loved that. But he's just looking at me and he, and he wants me in brighter clothes. And he's looking at me and he's like, I like it. I like it. But there's something off about it. And I can't, he's, it's like, he's like, it's almost like it's too intense. And so I threw at him what I was, what was discussed at my color analysis. I'm like, is it because the color is wearing me and I'm not wearing the color? And he's like, yes, that's it. That's it. And there you go. There you go. And so I was like, thank you for validating that I am in fact a summer. And because it's not that the colors of the winter are bad it's just that they're a little too tense for my complex, uh, intense for my complexion. Therefore, they don't like 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 I said. The best way to say it is they wear me. So when you when you look at me in that shirt, the first thing you notice is my shirt. When you look at me in something like this, which is my color, you notice my face. The color complements my face, and I look good. It's not about the shirt looking good. I look good in this color, and that's that's the difference, right? So we critiqued all of these different clothes. And we walked away with pretty things. That's what I called them, pretty things, that I looked amazing in. I look amazing. I feel like a million bucks in this shirt, if I'm being completely honest. Um, and, and it's and it was one of the things that I'm like, look at this in a size large, in the body I'm in now, dressing for it and feeling sexy, feeling desired 
because my husband's putting me in things and he's like, these, this looks great on you. You know, you're, you're worth spending the money on. Like it was just all in all a very affirming, size affirming situation. It was great. It was, it was, it was true. It was one of those things. And so as I have been on the journey of body acceptance and educating others and myself that like, it's okay to be an intuitive eater, to have food freedom and still want to change your body. Like all of that still stands, but the importance of being on this journey from a point of love, from a matter of acceptance about your body, love about your body and wanting better health and better functionality and just honoring and respecting your body is going to get you a lot farther than I have to diet because I need to change my body. And one of the ways to do that is to get out of the, um, get out of the, I have to change my body is you've got to, you got to make yourself feel good on the outside. Buying clothes that fit the body you're in is what's important. Like it makes you feel good. So now I go into my closet and I've got like seven or eight new tops that I can just throw on and be like, "Mm, look at this. I look fabulous. And none of them fail. Not a single one fails. And it was just a really, it was a fun experience and it was a validating experience. And I wanted to share that with y'all because hopefully you found some part of it valuable. And that was my wellness win. My wellness win was taking the big leap towards like this step, this admitting that this is the size I am and having my husband pick out clothes in this size and blah, blah, blah. And we've even, we even started having a conversation. He want, really wants me to clean out my side of the closet. He wants to do it too. We're both going through a wardrobe overhaul right now. He's doing it because his clothes are, some of his clothes are really, really old because he doesn't often go clothes shopping. And he also due to his recent health stuff, he's lost some weight. So he looks trim and almost like, he's like, I actually think I've lost some muscle. I'm like, you have, you have lost some muscle. And that's what happens when you're losing weight in a non, not awesome way, right? I've been here for 20 minutes and just been blow drying my hair. I'm glad you're here, Kim. Um, I had to blow dry my hair earlier today. I also got a haircut this last week. Feeling fabulous about that too. Um, by the way, friends of Ulta, Ulta Beauty, if you go to their salon, you earn points on your salon services. True story. And you can redeem points on your salon services. Just so you know, the more you know. Um, I wasn't married to my, my, the hairstylist I had at my one place left. And I wasn't married to the lady that I had last time. I was like, And then I discovered that it was just a couple dollars cheaper, but so like about the same price to just go to the Ulta salon. So I went to the woman who used to do my eyebrows before I got a brow bar lady. Um, and she did my hair so nice. I loved it. I got like a deep, deep hydrating mask that she put me under the dryer for, for 15 minutes. Like it was a whole experience and I got points for it. What's not to love. Um, anyway, I digress. But with the closet clean out thing, my husband's even has, he has bins and he's in the most non-judgmental way possible, the non-expecting way possible. He's like, okay, here's what we're going to do in, we're going to get, you know, we're going to put clothes that are like, that you don't want anymore. And then I've got each of us a bin for clothes that don't fit us right now. And you can decide that and whatever piece of clothing is, if this is something that you think you might fit into later, we can put it in the bin and we'll put it downstairs and we won't get rid of it. And we'll just put it downstairs. And it's just the, the lack of judgment behind all of it. Cause it's a very supportive thing. Like let's clean out the closet and like not have the stuff you're not wearing because they don't fit hanging in the closet. That's dumb. That's a waste of space. So it, it was just, it's been a really body affirming weekend. That's that's really what it comes down to. And that is what I wanted to share with y'all. Does anybody have any questions or comments about that topic? The story I just said, any of that stuff, let a rip. I'm going to get updated with all of the commentary here with all of the commentary. Um, I was going to plan on being work 60 hours a week and deal with that because they only need to give one or two days notice for my schedule. But if you said you're only getting 15 hours in the week, then you know, you're not getting 60, you know, you're not getting 60. And then if you do, if you only get one or two days in advance, which 
I don't know what that's about. That's not how it works in the Midwest, but I digress. Well, maybe it is now. I haven't been in retail since 2015, so I actually don't know. But if that's how it works, then make yourself a list of weekly things you need to do and plug and play. Plug and play. That's all you got to do is plug and play for the season. I credit all brand buds for killing it with the fiber. All brand buds are fantastic. Champy got his first dose of insulin. I had a yellow lab, Bailey, and she was diabetic and I had to give her her insulin shots every day. And she had so much fat and skin on her body that I don't even think she realized I sh shoved a needle into her twice a day. <laughs> but she is how I learned how to fill syringes. So I actually was able to give myself allergy shots at home. Um, I had my mom do it for a while because she's a nurse. And then I realized I can do it myself. And I just started giving myself the allergy shots. Um, and it was all credited to the fact that I would give Bailey her insulin. Do, do, do. Rotation, angulation, irregularity, deformity, swelling is an acronym to use if you tell. If you have broken bones. Interesting. And I don't think I have. I, 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 I'm convinced I have a little bit of swelling. I'm convinced I have a little bit of swelling. The rotation's not weird. There's no weird angulation. Um, and I don't think there's any deformity. I didn't know that. I didn't know you know so much about medicine, Andy. Um, the only reason I've ever heard of shields because of my Facebook group. Um, I live in shorts of a t-shirt. Giving my smock size at work was hard because not only did I have to admit a size, but I wasn't sure what size to get because it's a button down thing. And those rarely work for me without sizing up. I had that very situation. I had this stunning blouse in the dressing room. It was the same color as this actually, but it was a beautiful, shiny, silken fabric. And it looked amazing, except for the gap right in between the buttons. And I was like, curse the chest <laughs> curse it. Cause even my husband, and I am like, and I'm like a stitch gun's not going to fix this. It's not. And so everything else about it was beautiful, stunning. It fit me great, but it was, it was right here that caused a problem. Yep. 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 Um, the top you're in makes your eyes really pop. Exactly. This is one of my like highlight colors, my highlight colors. And, and I learned an interesting thing today. So I follow um, a handful of house of color consultants on um, Instagram. One of the ones that I follow is a summer or so she thought. And I knew she was a summer. I started following her because she puts out great content and she's a summer. So all of her wardrobe is summery stuff. And today she posted an outfit in a burnt orange color. And so I DM'd her and I was like, I am so curious because I know you're a summer. What, why are you in orange? Like the audacity, why are you in orange? Just out of curiosity. Cause as a summer myself, I know that sometimes there can be overlap into the autumn season. And I'm just curious about what's going on here. And she actually said that she, um, there is a, like soft summer and soft autumn do overlap. And she started wearing more autumn colors and realized that she might actually need to get re colored. And she discovered she's in fact an autumn, not a summer. And we got into a whole conversation and it was really, really great. And she said, she's a soft autumn. And I was like, I don't actually know my subtype. And so she's like, well, do you have your after picture? Or, and I was like, unless my wow colors tell me my after type. And she's like, they do send me your after color. So, or picture. So I sent her my picture and she told me that I am a dark brown summer and that I am definitely a summer. She goes, the summer looks amazing on you. You are a dark brown summer. And so I learned that little tidbit today that I'm a dark brown summer. Do, 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 do. I might have to try Ulta next time I decide to do something with my hair. I've been having some meh experiences with hair. Yeah, I really liked, and I went to the lady that I knew there, but she always did a bang up job on my eyebrows. So I'm like, she can't be that bad at hair if they let her work there, right? She was fabulous. I loved it. My hair takes minutes at the moment. Um, last time I owned a button down top that I wore button down, I had to get the largest side available. I went down to my knees. It was awful. Oh no. Um, we just got a shields here a few days ago. I haven't been wet yet. Andy, I wish my hair didn't take forever to style. I know I choose to spend time, but sometimes I wonder why. I pick the days. I pick the days. The other day, it was wash it and let it air dry because I was too lazy. I saved the blow dry days for when I'm actually going to be like out in public at church or on or in front of the camera. Um, and then I have learned I can 
I swear to you, it's because of this product from Loma. And I'm not just plugging it because I'm an affiliate, but I've talked about it multiple times. It's the, hang on, I have a little bottle of it because I love it so much that this is also traveling with me. Um, the fortifying reparative tonic. I swear to you, it's like a hair oil, but it's like the, the bonding type stuff, the fortifying reparative tonic. You only need, and your hair is pretty short, isn't it, Kim? So like you only need a pump or two and you put it in like from your, your scalp down. I put the, the, the tonic in and I put in like their calming or soothing cream and I blow dry it and I straighten it. My hair will look like this for days days, I tell you, just a little bit of dry shampoo to zhuzh it up unless I do something that gets real sweaty. Or um, I might have to rerun a straightener through it if I sleep with my hair up because my hair will crease. But I can, I can, like, I'll have this hair until at least Friday, at least Friday, maybe Saturday, because as long as the dry shampoo keeps my hair smelling okay, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So um, if y'all are in a market for something that really makes your hair look fabulous, um, Fortifying Reparative Tonic by Loma. It's Loma Beauty is the website and Diva is the discount code that'll get you 20% off. Thank you in advance for your support. So worth it and cheaper than Uluplex. Cheaper than Uluplex, same technology, cheaper than Uluplex. Smells amazing. You're welcome. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, and go to the shields, especially, I don't know. Are your boys outdoorsy boys? You, you can spend an arm and a leg in there and I'm not at all exaggerating. The bill we ran up at shields was shocking, but it wasn't because like we knew what we were buying, but like one of my pairs of shorts, which are outdoorsy shorts, stretchy, quick, dry, you know, like ready for summery adventures were $79. $79. And, um, so like, it, and then I got myself a pair of hokas as water shoes. So yeah, it's it like, it racked up really, really quick, but the quality of the stuff in there is insanity. And the amount of stuff they have in there is also insanity. Um, I sometimes will take a gander past the, uh, protein powders because they have brands that I can't commonly find. Um, at the time, the one time that I went there for a weight bench, my weight bench is also from Shields, by the way. Um, the, uh, I went to the protein powder section and it was the only place I could purchase clean, simple eats, not on the website. And so I was able to pick up their little individual packets and try a bunch of them to establish whether or not I liked the product. And now I know that I like the Clean Simple Eats protein because Shields sold it. And I haven't seen it anywhere else but Shields, which I thought was kind of cool. So I love Shields. And I told my husband as we were browsing the stuff, because here's the thing, sale not, it, it's not much of a thing there, especially on the clothes. And there's a lot of clothes. And so as my husband and I were browsing through, you know, $79 pairs of shorts and pants, I looked at him and I was like, you know, when people are asking us what we want for Christmas and birthdays and we can't come up with something, gift cards to Shields is the right answer. Like truly it's the right answer because there's so much stuff in that store that I would love to have. Um, because it's, it's high quality and it's, again, it's for outdoor. And what do I do all summer long in Minnesota? We're freaking outside. We're at the Arboretum. I'm walking. I'm doing, we're in, um, we're on our favorite little date night strip. We're always outside because it's freaking beautiful here. Um, I went for a walk today because it was 70. What is it now? Oh, it's 60 degrees. Now the high was like 60, 69. It got up to 69 today. You better believe that I had two workouts today. And one of them was slapping on my braces and walking around this neighborhood because oh, it felt so good to just get outside and get some sun and not have to wear long sleeves. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Um, so the moral of the story is Kim Shields is dangerous, <laughs> but in like the best way possible, but it's dangerous. I'm on the side of Instagram that talks about house of color mistyping and other color systems. It's fascinating. And I kind of want to get analyzed by other color seasons. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm still a spring. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're still a spring too. I'm definitely a summer. Like there's no, there's no denying. I am a summer that can wear winter. Um, I, I can wear black. Like I look pretty decent in black. Um, but I also wear the one thing that made me go, well, what, what, what is this transitional? Like what, what part of summer can go into autumn is because of 
two things I own that look really good on me that are in like this faded olive green color, which is very clearly not a summer color. It is a, it is an autumn color. It's actually not too different from this color. It might be a slightly, oh, come on, focus on it for heaven's sake. There you go. Um, so it's not unlike this color. It might be a little bit more faded than this color. Um, I'm trying to see if I have a better example. I just thought of something else I want to show you. I did not prepare affiliate links tonight. I'm sorry. Um, although you're probably not, but I just thought of something that I got in the mail that some people are going to care about and others are not. Um, but I'm going to, I have to show you because now I can't stop thinking about showing you, but, um, I have a couple of things in this color and I look amazing in it. I look amazing in it. My eyes turn that color and it's just all around a sage, sage, olive green, good time. Uh, which makes me go, well, is that like the single autumn color that I can wear? Why is there, why is the pendulum like dipping into the other color? I can't fully commit, but I can dip into the other color. What's that about? Which is why I inquired with this woman initially anyway. Um, so I thought it was interesting. Choose the days to spend more time. I'm going to try Loma as a licensed stylist. I get it wholesale. That's awesome. <gasps> try Loma. I, I love it. I have used this brand and I talked about this before, but like I used this brand back when I went to my girl, Jackie. So I started going to her when I got married is when she started becoming my stylist. And at the salon she worked at at the time, she, um, that Loma was, was like kind of the middle range. It wasn't like the really, really, really expensive stuff, but it was higher end. Um, it smells good. It feels good. And so I used it and used it and used it. And then when she left the salon, there was a period of time where she left the salon and they didn't have a, an online store. So I had no way to get more Loma. And then a handful of years ago, they started their online store and I ordered everything that I used to use the dry. I just got a new dry shampoo, the dry shampoo, the nourishing shampoo, the nourishing conditioner. I also have the deep conditioner in all in the green bottles. These are the green bottles, um, as evidenced by the green label here too. Um, I buy, I like, I buy the shampoo and conditioner by the leader because I will use it and I love it. And the fortifying reparative tonic, the um, calming cream and the soothing cream are both great. I will never go back. I will never go back. I have no need for other hair brands because like I need a, um, I use a hate protectant from a different brand. And there's one other product that I need from a different brand. And I can't remember what it was because, oh, and I use the bumble and bumble air dry stuff. Other than that, it's all Loma all the time. And it's so good. It's so good. I am a brand loyal to this brand. I love them. Um, I actually like the Hoka's I tried out. They ended up being too narrow for me. And that's funny because the Hoka's that I bought, they're the water shoes, but like they had the widest toe box I've ever seen on a shoe on my foot. It was great because it wasn't wide. It was just regular. And it was just such a wide toe box. Do, 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 do. In 2017, I had cancer and lost all of my hair. One of the positives of cancer for me was not having any hair to style and popping on a wig, showing up with the silver lining. Um, but I have seen like on TikTok and stuff, some people who have cancer, who have a bunch of different wigs. And I was like, wow, you can just take your look anywhere you want to take it. Um, I ordered a couple samples of my favorite electrolyte powders, new unsweetened product. So excited. I love that. Um, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Andy. There's one person I follow who is typed a string by House of Color, but through another system, she's an autumn. Interesting. Um, I've had I've had cancer in my family too. So I get it. The other systems are a bit more scientific and focus on hue, chroma, and value. It gets more specific than the four season system. I'm just used to very wide toe box. I, yeah, I don't I don't know how I feel about the uh the 16 system or whatever, but like I have the information I need. I have the information I need, which is great. Okay, I have to show you guys this. Because, and like, you've seen it on Instagram. But y'all, when I tell you that I found out about this collaboration and I squealed with glee and went, just take all my money. Just, just take it. Just take all my money. I was conservative with my money. And I only bought one thing. It's an eyeshadow palette. It's not, y'all, it's a, it's a wicked, like in collaboration with the Broadway show, 
palette. This is by One Size Beauty, um, which is a, a influencer owned brand by Patrick Starr. Can we? <laughs> I, I mean, can we just look at the names? Look at the names of the, the colors. Ball Gown, Galinda, Flirt and Flounce, Tender Heart, Wicked, Emerald City, Flying Free, Nessa Rose. Stop it. Stop it. I, I pre, not pre-ordered, but I, um, give me a close up of the shadows. They're beautiful. And the blushes come on now, but wait. But wait, do I have something I can wipe my hands on? I need to get a tissue. Hang on. Because if I do this, it's going to get messy for my hands. Hang on. Oh, get a tissue. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's, let's, um, do, 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 do. Stop it. I don't know how I can get it to focus on my hand. Focus on my hand. Focus. Focus. No. Not going to do it. Come on. There we go. Stop it. Can we? I mean, I squealed with glee when I heard it existed. I squealed with glee when I opened the box. Um, I can't. And here's, you want to know the part that's killing me a little bit? It's killing me just a little bit. Um, the alphabet colors are not exactly in my color palette. <laughs> so what clothes am I supposed to wear the alphabet colors with? Like I've been dying to try like the, so the wizard and I, it looks like it's a, it's a teal and Nessa Rose looks like it's a teal, but like this lime green PS, this used to be the color of my car, not joking, metallic and all. Um, but like this wicked green color here, what summer color can I wear that with? Purple maybe, but Oh, I wiped it off already. It's stunning. It's stunning. Oh my gosh. So um, it was, I think it was a $49 palette. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. They also have a, um, a highlighter called Defying Gravity. And it took every ounce of my willpower not to purchase it because that was like 30 something dollars. And then the brush, which looks like a broomstick. Like, go look at this. It's at Sephora. Go look at this online. It looks like broomstick. The 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 highlighter and when I don't wear highlighter. So I I really couldn't justify buying it. If it ever goes on like clearance or something, or I happen into a little spending opportunity, maybe I'll pick it up before it goes away. But I'm like, if there's one thing that I have to have, it's that palette because I'll actually use that. But oh, it's beautiful. And then, and then they have a setting spray. They being one size. Hang on. I bought the setting spray, a small one, because I wanted to try it because this is apparently like the greatest setting spray. And I'm just going to throw out there that I created some content for my course on the same day that I got up and went to church and like had a whole day in my, in my makeup. And not only did I get complimented at church on how awesome my makeup looked, but on the content I created hours later, one of the members of the course complimented my makeup and said, your makeup looks amazing. And I'm thinking that this helped. And um, they had one made for the Wicked collaboration. And I was like, I have to have it because it says po popular on it, and which is one of the songs from Wicked, for those of you that don't know. Um, so it had like, it was all glindified, right? Why didn't I buy it, you ask? Great question. There's glitter in it. <laughs> and normally, Glitter Queen here would be all about the things with shimmer. But I'm sorry, is there a reason that I need literally fine milled glitter sprayed all over my face of makeup on the day-to-day? -day? No, there's not. So I talked myself out of that because if it was a regular setting spray and just had the pretty... Um, the pretty bottle, then I would have purchased it and used the setting spray. I have no need for setting spray that has glitter in it. it makes me kind of sad that I don't, but I don't. I digress. Um, Andy's question. Oh, you know what? You're right. I never answered Andy's question about way to way to bring it back, uh, Lissa. Um, 
my favorite color. Do y'all know my favorite color? Actually, take guesses. What's my favorite color, guys? What's my favorite color? Yep. Yep. Wasn't sure how many guesses there were going to be. Teal. Teal is a good one. Teal's a good one. I like me some teal, but purple is the winner. <laughs> purple is the winner. Um, yes, 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 yes. Purple is one of my brand colors. If you pay attention to the things I'm flinging around in videos and whatnot, like everything is purple. These are like my brand, almost like my brand colors. Um, everything is purple. The top to my Apple pencil is purple. Um, every water bottle, the pens that I use primary, this is literally what's lying around my desk right now. And I think I have a purple marker on the floor. Oh no, it's a pink marker. Purple pens. Purple. Um, yes, I know you're giving a completely wrong answer. <laughs> um, if you wanted to give the most wrong answer though, your answer would have been orange. That's the most wrong answer. Um, I like yellow as a color. I like it as a concept. It's bright. It's fun. It's pretty. I hate it on me. I'm convinced there's supposed to be a shade of yellow for every color season. The only, like the one that's in my color palette is like ice yellow and that doesn't look good on me either. <laughs> so, um, there is not a yellow. I don't think that I can wear that looks great on me. So yellow's not a great choice, but orange, mm -mm, mm -mm. I am not a fan of orange. I can't tell you why it's not as cheerful as yellow is. And red, there are, there is shades of red, the really bright, warm shades of red. I do not like, um, but red has a spectrum, right? Red can turn into a cool red and a maroon red. And I like those reds, just not the really harsh, bright, orangey reds. Um, yes. Oh, yellow is the opposite of purple. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah. So Andy, great question. My, my favorite color is purple. Um, now you know. Now you know. Um, other contenders are Alphaba Green. Yes, that's right. Alphaba Green. What color is Alphaba Green? Great, great question. I would love to tell you. Um, it's this color right here. It's this sparkly one. Yep. That is one of my favorite colors right there. Alphaba Green. Like almost to the shade, which is hilarious because they collaborated with the makeup artists and like people in Wicked. So like this is actually Alphaba Green. <laughs> It's actually on the green. But like, that's why I had the Ford Fiesta in this color. Like, because I love it. It's my favorite. So the green and the purple, the green and the purple, which is actually, I'm now realizing what this palette is missing because one of the complementary colors to darken up Elphaba in act two is like this deep purple color that they use as shading on her green skin. Um, something hilarious about this, which I just appreciated the extra work. If you want to check out like all the social media stuff, go to one size beauties, um, Instagram page. They like doctored up Patrick star in Glinda's costumes and makeup in alpha full alphaba greenification, like mad props. And I'm kind of jealous what he got to experience. Um, but in, you know how in, in makeup stuff, when you're like going to buy something, there are swatches and like everyone has swatches on their arms, right? So typically when you go to a listing, you see swatches of different skin tones. So you'll see like a really light arm and a medium arm and a dark arm, right? They threw in the green arm in the color swatches of the palette. There is the alphaba green arm being swatched with all of the colors and the detail of that. I just... I couldn't, I just couldn't. It made me so happy. Um, I'm going through a bit of a yellow face. <laughs> um, I like a warm orangey reds. Someone at CVS criticized a gloss I was looking at for looking too orange. That's what sold me on it. Well, it makes sense because if it looks good on you, that's great. But like, let's be honest, that's not going to look good on me either. I have a really orangey red and it's like, I've never worn it. It is the Ron Weasley color from the ColourPop Harry Potter collection. I have never once worn it because it is so drastically the wrong color for me that, like, why would I wear it? Why would I wear it? I have the whole, the whole Harry Potter kit and I don't wear that because it's just, it's just the wrong, it's wrong. It's wrong. 
Um, I have six purple flasks. I have deep blue water bottles times three. Good color choices, Andy. Really good color choices. Uh, cool toned red looks so heavy on me. Right. So it's not right for you. Right. And that's the joy of color seasons. That is the joy of color seasons. Um, it's funny because we talked about, I told you guys, we talked about color seasons and color analysis at Easter and it came up again at Girls Gab, which I thought was funny. But also, um, I don't think I told you all this tidbit, but like as we were having Easter dinner um, and we were talking about, it, I'm like, oh, I got my colors done. Actually, with the lady who lives right over there, she lives one street and like the streets are very close together. I recognized the first time we went to my small group leader's house, I recognized the area because I have a photographic memory. And I was like, I've been here before. I swear I've been here before because one street over. So we drove right by the street is where my color analysis was done. So literally like backyards almost meeting. There are a couple houses down, but like this close. So I was like, we can just go knock on her door, see if she'll color it. It says, I know exactly where the color analysis lady is. Um, I thought that was funny. Cool. Yes. Yeah, so, all right, my friends, it's eight o'clock. So I'm going to let y'all go. My husband's about to leave to go to the airport to pick up my mother-in-law. And so I will have Mama E with me for the rest of the weekend. So if I'm a little quiet on socials, which I mean, I have been recently anyway. So it is what it is. I'm going through a phase, y'all. I'm going through a phase. We're just like creating the content of any kind. I'm just like, I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, so now you know where my headspace is at and that's just going to have to be okay for now because why create it if I'm not feeling inspired to create right now? So with that being said, it was lovely to see all of your lovely names. I was going to say faces, but I'm not actually seeing your faces, although I'm picturing all of you as I speak to you. So, um, thank you for being here. I appreciate you all so very much. Have a wonderful rest of your week and a great weekend. Enjoy the weather as spring is starting to actually spring up and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye guys.